Alright y'all, if you saw my random creature design video, I talked about a potential series which was drawing the entire cryptid iceberg. Well, almost the entire cryptid iceberg, but I'll explain that in a moment. As you can see by the title of this video, I've decided to go ahead and launch myself into this project, and for this first video, in addition to making the first entry of course, I want to explain some loose guidelines for this series. First, I'm going to make this series with the intention of it being viewed as a long playlist. That means that this is the only video where I'm going to explain the guidelines so that in subsequent videos we can just get right into the illustration and the videos can be watched straight through without the repetition of an introduction or the opening B footage montages I usually do. As much as I like including those in my videos, I really want this series to be as binge friendly as possible. And personally, when I binge a series, I don't like repetitive intros. I just want to get right into the next episode. That being said, I'm also going to do my best to keep these videos as short as I can. So probably a maximum of 10 minutes for each part, hopefully less. Each video will be centered around one cryptid and will include some information about the creature. Although if several creatures in one tier are very similar, they might be grouped into the same video. The medium and maybe the style might vary from video to video. As is typical of iceberg content, I'll be focusing on one tier at a time from top to bottom. I'll be selecting whichever creature I feel like drawing from whatever tier I'm working on. The iceberg chart I'll be basing this off of will be linked down below in the description for each video. It was created by Jimbo Seth on Reddit, hopefully I'm saying that right. This iceberg does include some actual animals, and as far as I can tell, this is because they are extinct animals that people still claim to see, so they've made it on here as cryptids, or they're an animal that people used to think was a cryptid, but turned out to be real. The iceberg also includes some mythological creatures. As well, some of the entries are more well known than their placement on the iceberg would suggest, and I saw where the creator said this is because they ran out of room on the previous tier. I'm not going to rearrange where they appear on the iceberg though, so just so you know, this is why some things might be oddly placed. As I mentioned before, I will be doing almost the entire iceberg. There are a few entries on this one that are controversial either for their cultural value or they're just too R-rated for me to tackle here, so I will be skipping over them. So just so you know, if you for whatever reason find the will to compare the series with the actual chart and you find that some creatures are missing, it's most likely intentional. There are roughly 250 entries on this thing either way, so y'all, this series is going to take a while. It should be fun though, and I hope y'all are ready for a long, crazy journey. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into our first entry of tier number one of Jimbo Seth's Cryptid Iceberg, the Hellhound. According to Wikipedia, a hellhound is a mythological hound which embodies a guardian or servant of hell, the devil, or the underworld. Hellhounds occur in mythologies around the world, with the best known examples being Cerberus from Greek mythology, Garmer from North mythology, the Black Dogs of English folklore, and the Fairy Hounds of Celtic mythology. Physical characteristics vary, but they are commonly black, anomalously overgrown, supernaturally strong, and often have red eyes or are accompanied by flames. Other examples of hellhounds around the world include the Cadejo of Central America, Dip of Catalonia, and the Gwishki of Wales. Growing up, I mostly read about hellhounds being referred to in the context of the black dogs or black shuck of England. This is because of the sheer amount of accounts that exist of people actually encountering these entities, which has allowed the hellhound to cross over from a mythical creature such as Cerberus, existing only in stories, to a cryptid that might or might not have some real world form. Before we get into some of these accounts, something else worth noting about a lot of hellhound folklore is the variation of their nature. Sure, some of them are said to be nothing more than the devil's attack dogs, violent, bloodthirsty entities who only exist for nefarious purposes. However, the word hellhound, as you could probably tell from their Wikipedia description, has become an umbrella term for many varied canine entities across many cultures, some of whom don't necessarily deserve the association to the infernal. Several legends, such as that of the Cadejo and the Black Dogs of England, tell of a neutral, good, or even protective aspect to these creatures. The Cadejo is said to come in a black and a white version, and depending on who you ask, one of them offers protection and the other one seeks to kill. Some black dogs follow a similar rule set to that of the entity that haunts the Hanging Hills near Meriden, Connecticut in the United States. According to legend, seeing the dog once is good luck. Seeing it a second time brings the opposite, and a third time is deadly. Similarly, the green, shaggy-coated Scottish Cushy is also considered an omen of death, but owes its allegiance to fairies rather than the devil. 
As far as actual sightings of a hellhound type creature, one of the earliest accounts was of, not surprisingly, the ever popular black dog. In 1127, the Peterborough Chronicle published a story of spectral huntsmen accompanied by hounds that were pitch black with staring, hideous eyes. Another account dates back to 1577, where a black dog variant known as the Black Shuck attacked two churches. First, it killed two people and caused the collapse of the church's steeple at the Holy Trinity Church of Blytheborough in Suffolk. It went on to the St. Mary's Church in Bungie, where, according to Reverend Abraham Fleming, it charged down the church aisle and viciously killed two more people before vanishing, leaving only strange scorch marks behind. 18th century Belgium produced reports of a shape-shifting black dog creature known as Old Red Eyes or the Beast of Flanders, who was blamed for a string of disappearances of children. More recently, the aforementioned Black Dog of the Hanging Hills was first described in the late 1800s in a work of fiction by W. H. C. Pynchon. In the story, he describes an incident that occurred when a pair of geologists, one identified only as F.S. and the other Herbert Marshall, were working in the Hanging Hills when they were approached by the dog. Contrary to many descriptions of gigantic hellish beasts, Pynchon described the Black Dog of the Hanging Hills as being ordinary and even friendly. Several versions of the story now exist. But the gist of it is that F.S. had crossed paths with the dog before on a previous trip to the area, where he had accompanied him for the better part of the day until it suddenly vanished while on his way back to his hotel. For Marshall, this would be his third time meeting the dog, and if you've been paying attention, you know what the third sighting entails. Both men knew of the tale surrounding the dog, but Marshall in particular thought it was all hogwash. Later that day, as they were conducting their research atop an icy cliff, Marshall slipped and fell to his death. A note after the story's conclusion revealed that six years after his account of the incident, F.S. himself was found dead near where Marshall had fallen after his own assumed third encounter with the dog. Although the story is fiction, it managed to work itself into local folklore, and people in the area began to repeat the tale as truth and reported having seen the dog themselves. There's so much more folklore and hellhounds in their subcategories than we can cover in this short video, so we'll wrap up the description portion of this video with one of my favorites, the Church Grim. This is a branch on the hellhound tree that almost seems like an anti-hellhound. These spectral canines were, of course, large black dogs that are said to guard churchyards from all kinds of unsavory individuals, even the devil himself. The Wikipedia article says that when a new churchyard was opened, it was believed that the first person buried there had to guard it against the devil. In order to prevent a human soul from having to perform such a duty, a black dog was buried in the north part of the churchyard as a substitute. Thus, a church grim was created. Like other black dog stories, the church grim also had a knack for predicting death, which it did by tolling the church bell at midnight before a death would occur. I could spend hours diving into the lore and numerous types of ghost dogs, but alas, let's talk about the art. For this art piece, I chose to go with a mixture of legends from under the hellhound umbrella, predominantly the Cadejo and the European black dog representations. The hooves and chain are from Cadejo folklore, while the rest of the dog was inspired by the mastiff-like descriptions of black dogs across Europe. Since hellhound folklore is so old, I thought it only be fitting to base the dog off of more ancient dog breeds, namely the Greek Shepherd and the Molossus of Epirus, rather than the Lab or Wolfhound variants you sometimes see. I looked at so many articles during the creation of this video that I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but I remember reading something about hellhounds or black dogs or one of the ghost dog species gnawing on the bones of the dead. Since I was feeling working on working with darker colors, I chose to run with that and place this guy in a graveyard digging up a midnight snack. This was actually my second attempt at this piece. The first attempt I did in marker and I just couldn't get it to match the image I had in my head, so I decided to have another go at it in watercolor. It's, it was pretty ironic because around this time last year, I drew another hellhound for the channel that I also royally borked up on where I had initially done it in watercolor and ended up starting over with marker. But anyways, as per usual, I printed the lines of, for this onto watercolor paper. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the ink did bleed a little when I first started because I totally forgot to give this time to dry. You'd think I'd remember to let the ink dry by now, but I was so looking forward to working on this that I completely forgot about it. So we'll get them next time, maybe. 